Christian Center on this beautiful Easter morning. Let's proclaim that Christ the Lord is risen today. Amen.
on Friday night. He thought he had won by Jesus dying and that it was all over. And then now he had the upper hand. He did not know that Christ was going to resurrect on the third day. He hadn't read the Bible, I guess, because it's prophesied through all the scriptures that on the third day he would rise from the dead. So we are so, we're so excited, so overwhelmed to be able to celebrate our risen Savior today. And I hope you're as excited about it as I am because it's just an awesome victory because the victory he won is also for us. We have eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen.
worship the Lord this morning and lift up his name, give him glory and honor and power forever. Lift up your voices and worship him this morning. Let me hear your voice, let God hear your voice as you give him glory and honor and power forever. We worship you, we worship the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. The Lamb now sits on the throne forever and ever. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you forever and ever and ever and ever. Power. 
It was something that he was doing. Even the cross. He, there is a, a text that says he turned his face resolutely towards Jerusalem. He turned his face towards Jerusalem. He knew what was going to happen, but he went. And he went because he knew that he was the Lamb of God. He went for Easter because that's when the Jewish people were offering lambs for their sins. But there were only pictures of the Lamb to come. And Jesus, the Lamb of God, gave his life on the cross at Easter. Amen? We don't need any more lambs. We don't need any more goats. We don't need any more bulls. We, we don't need any of those sacrifices anymore. That was of the past. That was a picture of the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Let's say that together. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Let's say it again. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Hallelujah. And you know, after Jesus resurrected in an extraordinary way on Sunday morning, on the first day of the week, he could have gone right away to heaven, but he did not. He stayed for 40 days. And that's another amazing move, an amazing move of Jesus. Those 40 days are an amazing move. In the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 1, where we read, Luke says, the former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Oh, let's give a hand to Jesus. 40 more days, not just three years, not just the gospel, but 40 more days. He stayed as the resurrected Lord, 40 more days. What, what was he doing? Well, what was he doing? Let's look at the picture. Let's look at the picture of the coach here. I think we have a picture of the coach. Uh, what, what, are you familiar with the coach? Are you familiar with what the coach does before the game? And let's say there are times when the team is sad. There's time when the team has not done too good. Sometimes it's, it's at the, at, in the middle of the game and the other team is winning. The other, the other team seems to be winning. But there is, oh, there is another half of the game coming. What does the coach do? He boosts the morale of the team. And I believe that Jesus stayed 40 more days to boost the morale of the apostles. Do they need the, to be boosted? Were they discouraged after the cross? Were they hiding? Were they in fear? Were they in grief? Yes, they were. But the captain of the host of heaven, the Lord of Lords, boosted his team. He was there to encourage them. And I believe that today he's here to encourage us. He's the same. He's going to boost your faith today. He's going to encourage you. He's going to strengthen you because he's alive. And he doesn't change. Even after the 40 days. And, and what, what, what's amazing is that even after the 40 days after he had gone back to heaven when Stephen was being stoned for his faith Jesus revealed himself the sky opened and Stephen saw Jesus standing standing at the right hand of God and looking to him as he was being persecuted for his faith when the biggest enemy of the Christian soul of Tarsus was on his way on the road to Damascus to persecute Christians, Jesus appeared and talked to him. Jesus told him, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. 
So when you're persecuting a Christian, you're persecuting Jesus. Because Jesus is alive in the heart of the believer. Jesus is a heart alive in your heart. Jesus knew not all that the Christians were going to be persecuted. He knew the difficult things that were going to come. And he appeared to them for the, those 40 days to prepare them to preach the gospel, to prepare them to see the glory of God, but also to prepare them to be strong in face of all opposition. Jesus boosting manifestations, that's how I call those 40 days. Jesus boosting manifestations of himself will turn grievers into worshipers, will turn doubters into believers, will, will turn sad women into happy and worshiping women, will, will turn doubting Thomas into believing Thomas, will turn Peter and his friend who, who were going back fishing to their old trade, he will change the, sh the, the fishermen into shepherds. He's going to say, feed my lamb. Feed my sheep. Be a, a spiritual leader. Be a church leader. You're not called to go fishing. You're called to go fishing man. You're called to be a pastor. You're called to be a, a shepherd. And this is what the Lord is still doing today. And I believe some of us today will be called not to just live a normal life, but to live a life of service for Christ. To live a life of enthusiasm for him. Amen? Amen. It started with, with, the, with the women. And the Bible gives us an amazing picture of those uh, women. We see it in Matthew 27, 55. And many women who followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, were there looking on from afar. They were looking at the, at, at the tomb, the place where Jesus had been placed, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of uh, Zebedee's son. Those women were, some of them were uh, of high position in society. In Luke 24, 10, we, we read it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them. And, and Joanna was uh, married with uh, a person working at the, at the palace, at Herod's palace. We see that in Luke chapter 8, and it says, verse 1, Now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village, preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and certain women who had been healed of evil spirit and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod, that's the king, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others who provided for him from their substance including Mary Magdalene. And those, all those women had followed Jesus up to the cross, and they were there crying, and they were there now on, uh, on the first day of the week. They, they had come to the tomb because they wanted to put perfume on the, on the dead body. They wanted to pay the last homages the way people used to do in, the, in those days. But as they were on the way, they were perplexed. They, were, they said, who shall roll the stone for us? Who, who, who is, who is, who, if they, you know, they, they went without thinking, oh, I, sh I should have taken my husband with me or my brother or, or two strong guys to, to move that big, that huge stone from the, from the tomb. But what happened when they got there? Jesus was going to boost their faith. Jesus was going to do it in an amazing way. 
They saw an angel first. They heard an earthquake. And then, and then he even, he even talked to them. And, uh, and, and, and in, in, a, in a short while, it says that they were worshiping at his feet. They, they were holding his feet and worshiping, worshiping him. Jesus used the message from the angel. Jesus used the earthquake. Jesus appeared himself to, to encourage them. And the first one he appeared to was, uh, was Mary Magdalene. Amen? And we read that in, uh, let's see, it's verse 9, Matthew 28, verse 9. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, the angel said, go tell the disciples that he is resurrected. And, and the blessing was, a, the boosting was a done yet, completely. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them and saying, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Oh, you're going to worship the Lord today as you realize more and more that he, that he is alive, that he is resurrected. And, and Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid, but go. Like the angel had said, Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will and, and for Mary Magdalene, for Mary Magdalene, Jesus did something amazing. And she was, the, the, she'll be the first one to see the resurrected Christ and to announce the message of the, of the resurrection. We read that in John chapter 20. But Mary stood outside by the tomb, weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of jesus had laid then they said to her woman why are you weeping she said to them because they have taken away my lord and i do not know where they have laid him now when she had said this she turned around and so Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Why are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have led him uh, and laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. I, I, I am the goosebumps. Jesus said to her, Mary. Jesus is saying to you this morning, Sifa. Jesus is saying to you, Esther. Jesus is saying to you, Katya. I know what you've gone through this year. But you're not alone. And your husband is not alone. I am with you, says Jesus. I am with you. And you'll see more than you have seen because I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus still speaks to people. Jesus still speaks to us through the Bible. He speaks to us by the Holy Spirit. He speaks to us through, through a message. He, he spoke to you today. You're here this morning because he spoke to you. Do you know why I know it? Because I told him. I said, Lord, speak to people today. Speak to people who haven't come to church for a while. Speak to them. Speak to them. Speak to them. Sometimes it's that sweet voice of the Lord in our spirit, in our heart. It's, oh, I should go to church today. Oh, you hear something like, oh, you should go to church today. That's not you, that's Jesus. Jesus said, Mary. She turned and said to him, Master, Rabboni. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say to them, 
And we got to go tip to our brethren. We got to go tell other people. 2021 is a year when we go tell other people. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is alive. Not just born, but he's born again. 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 He came in the flesh. And he came back in the flesh. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Become good news bearers. Magdalene, Mary Magdalene was the first evangelist. She was the first telling people that Jesus was alive. And that same day, there were two men we know the name of one of them. His name is, was Cleopas. And uh, they, they, they were going away. They were going away from Jerusalem. They had come for Easter. They had come for Jesus. They, they were disciples. So they were hoping. They were hoping that Jesus was the Messiah. They were hoping that Jesus was going to be the strong king and the strong leader and and keep the Romans out of the country, but now they saw him hanging on a cross. They saw him die, and they and they and they knew that he was put in a tomb. So they, they were they were going back. They were going away. Their condition was vacillating things. You know the doctor sometimes he used his strange strange words. Their faith was was vacillating. Is that an English word? All right, because I know it's a French word. Vacillating French. They, 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 when, when Jesus comes, he, he comes to boost their faith, but they don't know. He walks with them. And he said, my guys, why are you? I think he said, my guys, yeah. Why, why are you so so sad? What's, what's going on? What's the, what's the problem? They said, well, are you the only one in Jeru being in Jerusalem that doesn't know what happened? Uh, they say that in Luke chapter 24 and uh, verse uh, 27. And, and before that it says, now behold, two of them, verse 13, Luke 24, two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was 17 miles from Jerusalem. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Then he said to them, O oh, foolish ones, that's verse 25, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken, ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory and beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself and they were so blessed that later on they will say verse 32 did not our heart burn within us while he talked to us on the road and while he opened the, the scriptures to us. Verse 30 says, Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with him, that he took bread, broke it, blessed it, and gave it to them. Blessed, broke, gave. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. The word of God warmed our hearts. Their hearts were burning while he was explaining all that the scriptures, there are, I think, 380 prophecies about the coming of Jesus and the detail of his coming. Everything, even everything that happened at the cross had been, had been prophesied. So the, the boosting for, for them, that was quite a, a long explanation of the, of the scriptures 
But then the Muslim was also taking communion. Why do we take communion? To boost our faith. Because we remember he died. We remember he resurrected. We remember he is alive and he is with us. Communion is a moment of uh, boosting of, of our faith. So after Jesus appeared to them, they went back. They had come back. Uh, they had come to, to see Jesus. Now they meet the living Jesus. Now they're going back. And when they arrived, the ten, uh, the ten apostles said, knew that he was resurrected. The women had told them the, them the story. And maybe he had appeared to Peter also in, uh, at a certain moment there. But those um, disciples were still, they, they were still in fear. They were still hiding. They were still locked in. We know what locked in means. We've learned what it is in, uh, in 2020, right? We, we've learned what that means to be locked in. And they, 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 they had been locked in since the, the crucifixion. And Jesus decided that for those people who knew him, for those people who, who knew that he would resurrect, it, resurrect because he had taught it to them, he had told them that he would be arrested, he would die, and on the third day, he would come back to life. He had said, uh, I have the power to take it back. I have the power to give my life, and I have the power to take it back. And th those people who had been taught for three years, they had seen the most amazing miracle. And you know, that still happens. Sometimes we're so blessed from, from our childhood, from being a little child, we've seen miracles, we've seen the power of God. When, when I was 12 years old, I saw the power of God. My grandfather was supposed to never walk again properly after a, a bad uh, breaking of his main bone in his leg. And the, the, the specialist said, you, you'll never walk normally again. And I, we were in a, in a little farm in the boondocks in the south of France. And the apostle of the, the Assemblies of God of France, the first man that preached the gospel in France, he came from England. And he came from England, and from England he came into our little farm. And I think he came from my grandfather and he came from me. Because he wanted me to know that there was a powerful God. I believed in God, but I didn't know about miracle. He came, and I remember, he, he prayed for my grandfather. He came, we were in the field. It was, I think it was a harvest, a wheat harvest season. And, the, and that man, the, the pastor of the city, brought that apostle to us, and he, he, he prayed for my grandfather. And when my grandfather went back to see the specialist, the specialist said, I've never seen a man like you recover from this kind of vulnerability. <laughs> and I, I can still see my grandfather afterwards. He would, he would use a, a, a fork and he would, he would pitch into the bales of hay or, and, and he would lift them up like this with a leg that was not supposed to heal. Now he was lifting those, what is it, 40 pounds, 50 pound bales of hay, and he would throw them on the, on the truck. This is what God does. God does the impossible, amen? amen? And some of us, we've been so blessed. We've known the Bible maybe all, all, all our life, and then our faith has pulled down. We've had issues, we've had problems, people have been hard on us. Like the apostles, their master had been crucified. Now that was a tough time. See, seeing Jesus crucified, that was, that was really hard. But they had seen all the other miracles. They had seen the resurrection of Lazarus, right? So they should have been the one believing. And they're here in fear. They're, when, even when the women said, came and said, uh, he's alive. 
Let's go. Those are women. You know, don't be offended, women. Okay, but they 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 said it. No, that that's 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 women talk. So Jesus said, I'm going to show them something. The the the, the room, the doors are locked. The windows have. Uh, have been, they, they have plants in the window. They don't want anybody to see that what's coming. And boom! Here appears Jesus. Right in the midst of that. Amen? Hallelujah. Yeah, let's give him the glory. This is Jesus. He could have come back to heaven. He could have said, you don't believe, you disbelieve, too bad. I'll call other people. I'll use other people. I don't need Luke anymore. I don't need Mark anymore. I don't, I don't need any of you. I don't need James. I don't need you. You guys are doubters and unbelievers. What I want to tell you this morning, that even if you have had doubts, even if you have stopped coming to church, maybe for years and years, God hasn't given up on you. And Jesus wants to show up in your life. And he wants to show you who he is. And he wants to use you and manifest his power and manifest his, his glory in your life. Hallelujah. So he said, he said, uh, Luke 24, 36, but now as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and suppose, oh, see, they, they still don't believe. They, they'd see the spirit and he said to them, why are you troubled? And when the doubts arise and arouse in your heart, behold, behold my hands, my feet. That's it. Hang on me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe this time for joy and marvel, he said to them, have you any food here? And they gave him a piece of the broiled fish and some honeycomb. And he took it and he ate it in their presence. Amen. Amen. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all these things must be fulfilled, which were written by the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Oh Lord, open our understanding that we may understand the scriptures. Amen. Is it okay if I pray for that? Lord, open my understanding more and more. Open our understanding that we may understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning with Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we need a shock treatment. We need the Lord to manifest himself powerfully in our lives. And Lord, we pray that you do it for all those who are not here this morning. Give them the shock treatment. Manifest yourself in, in their lives, I pray in Jesus' name. Now, Thomas wasn't there, right? That first time. So, Thomas is a case. We still talk about it. He, he, the first time, he, when they told him, yeah, we we saw him, we, we touched him. Uh, he ate fish with her. So if I don't see him, if I don't touch his feet, if I don't touch the, the side where the, the spear hit him, uh, I will not believe. I mean, Thomas was, I will not believe. Even if all the apostles were swearing on their Bible, on the Old Testament, <laughs> they were swearing, we saw him, we ate with him. Thomas no way. If I don't have my own proof, I will not believe. And that's John chapter 20 and verse 25. Unless I see his hands, in his hands, the prints 
on the fringe of the nails and put my finger into the fringe of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Well, maybe you know some people like that. Well, the Lord is capable of revealing himself to them. Don't, don't be bothered by people who say, I will not believe. Uh, because of what happened, I will never come back to church. Because of the issue I have with a family member, I will never come back to church. Well, with God, there is no never. No, let's say it together. No never with God. God can do all things. So we read in John 20, 26, and after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst of them. See, said Thomas did the shock treatment too. So he came in the room and said, peace with you. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hand and reach your hand and put it into my side. Do not, do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said, I mean, he went like this, my Lord and my God, my Lord and my God, oh, my Lord and my God, oh, you are the Son of God, you are the Lord, and you are my Lord, you are my God. I mean, he, he just fell, fell at the feet, at the feet of the Lord. The Holy Spirit brought conviction. Lord, I would pray that the Holy Spirit brings conviction this year. We want conviction, not conviction in the tribunal, conviction in the heart, conviction of sin. The people that are stuck away from the Lord, away from church because of their sins, we speak conviction of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, he brings conviction, he convicts people that they're sinners, that they're miserable, that they need Jesus, that they need revival, that they need the grace of God. So Thomas got the shock treatment, and Thomas responded so good to that, uh, to that treatment. Now, Peter and a few, Peter, uh, Tom, and Thomas, Nathaniel, and, and the sons of Zebedee, when Peter said in John 21, he said, I'm, 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 I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing. They said, okay, we're, we're, we're coming with you. And, and when you do the things that you have not been called to do, Jesus had already called all those people. He had already told them, I will make you fishers of men. You're not going to be fishing for the rest of your life. He had said, follow me, and for three years, they, they had followed him, but now they, they were going back to fishing. And what happens? They don't catch anything. You know, when we're doing the wrong thing, when, when we're not doing the will of God, most of the time, it doesn't work. Or if it works, but sometimes it works wonderfully well, but we're miserable. We're unsatisfied because we're not doing what the Lord wants us to do. And so the leader being Peter, Jesus had the feeling Peter needs a special pep talk, you know, like a coach. He, he needs a special pep talk. He, he needs a special uh, motivation. And first, he's going to show them that he's in charge of the sea. He's in charge of the fish. Have you caught something? They've been fishing all night. And Jesus says, have you caught anything? That's kind of funny. Jesus can be funny, you know. He's got humor. Have you caught anything? No, nothing. Well, cast on that side. 
Throw the net in. Then there was so much fish, 153 big fish. And in those days, fish would be big. 100. Peter was so amazed, he grabbed this, uh, this clothes, he chucked in the water. He, 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 he went to Jesus, and Jesus gave him a special counseling moment. Simon, that was the other name of Peter, but Jesus said Simon because Simon was his name before Jesus gave him a new name, before Jesus called him Peter. So why does he call him Simon? Because he's going to his old job, his old life. He's, he, he's going back. He's going to say, okay, it's wonderful. Jesus is resurrected, sure, but... I, I, I'll go back to my father's business, I'll go back to fishing. So when Jesus talks to him, he says, Simon, do you love me more than these? Because he had said he would love him, follow him, be faithful. He had denied him three times. And, and Peter's heart was, was tender. He said, yes, Lord, you know all things, you know I, I love you. Jesus asked him again, and then he said, feed my lambs. Then he asked him a third time. And Peter was, was grieved, but he asked him a third time. But sometimes we need the Lord to speak to us more than once. And then when Peter said, yes, you know all things, you know I, I love you, and the verb he used the last time was, I, you know I really, really, really love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Amen? Amen. And Peter was a changed man. He's going to preach to 3,000 people. His first, his first throwing the net of souls. He won, he won catch 153 souls. He's going to catch 3,000. They will repent. And they will be baptized as a sign of their faith. And we're almost at the end of those 40 days when Jesus, the captain, the coach, is here boosting the faith of his disciples, both women and, and men that have followed him. And now he's meeting with them for, for the last time. Matthew 28, 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some had doubt. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and, and the Son and the Holy Spirit to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always until the end of the age. So he's going to commission them again. You, Jesus gives them the mission. Not, don't go fishing, go evangelize. This, this is what you're called to. Then he's going to say also, uh, tarry in Jerusalem uh, for the Holy Spirit to come. And he made promises. He said, these signs, that's the, the Mark's report, 16, uh, chapter and verse, verse, starting at verse 15. And then verse 17, he said, all these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. In Luke 24, it says, Behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with the power from on high. And what I, what I 
love is that before he let them go, he commissioned them, he told them to pray and wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon them, but as he left, he blessed them. I, I, can, just, I can just see Jesus blessing his, his disciples as he's this time going up to, to heaven. The pep talk has worked. They will go, they will pray, they will receive the Holy Spirit, they will preach the gospel, they will see incredible miracles, they will see the glory of God, and, and Jesus will, even during that time, he had appeared to 500 people at the same time, and something amazing. Later on, from heaven, he will appear and he will change <coughs> and transform Saul of Tarsus into the, the Apostle Paul. They went after Jesus boosted their faith during those 40 days. They went and they were world changers. And this morning, Jesus sends us to be world changers. Joseph, you're going to be a world changer, right? So I'm going to baptize you, not today, but previously, all right? You tell me when you're ready, okay? May the Lord will fill you with the Holy Spirit, and you'll pray with people, and they will be healed, okay? Because we're all called to pray for people, to see people healed. We're called to lay hands on people and they will be healed. We're called to lay hands on people and they will receive the Holy Spirit. You don't have to wait for me for that. I, I think of the baptism that lead people to pray. Be a world changer. This morning you're all called to be world changers. You're going to make a difference in your school. You're going to make a difference in your neighborhood. You're going to make a difference with your friends. You're going to make a difference in your family. Jesus is commissioning you. Amen. Amen. Receive him in your heart to start with. Say, Jesus, I'm sorry for my doubt. Jesus, I believe you died for me on the cross. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. And say, Jesus, I'm going to be baptized. If you're not baptized yet, I'm going to be baptized, and I'm going to be a world changer. I'm going to make a difference wherever I go, because you're alive, you're in my heart, and your spirit is going to make the difference. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together before we move into our baptism section this morning. Let's just, let's just say a simple prayer, and whether you're here online, I invite you to say that prayer with me. Just say, Jesus, thank you for dying for me on the cross. Thank you for resurrecting for me on the cross. Thank you for staying 40 more days to encourage your disciples. I pray that you encourage me, that you boost my faith, and make me a world changer. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask the candidates to baptism to join me. So we have Bayou and we have Mercy. Is the blue working?
promise me. First of all, before I start, I just want to tell the Almighty God, thank you because you pay it all for me. As I sit here, some things bear with me, you have mentioned. On Savage Lane, down on Calvary, oh, you gave your life for me. Bruised, grown, grind your hand with thumb, no greater love performed for me. Nails in your hands, nails in your feet, death in your side. Sometimes we're going to 
God every now and again. God has my fellow men. The good thing, but you don't know if it is sin, but it is sin against the Almighty God. We don't know it. Only God knows. I went to him over and over, asking for mercy. And he, he has mercy on me. I confess my sin over and over to the Almighty God. And he opened his arms to me. He said, come. He loved me so much. He took me as a child. He never gave up on me. I told us to be there to go. But God said, no. This is my life. You will carry on. In Jesus' name. And I want to tell everybody concerning our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as the word of Torah said, Jesus told us in his word that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. There is no other way to come to the Lord. And I accept him as my Lord and Savior, and I'm ready to tell everybody out there. I'm ready to tell people out there that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the only way to the Father. There is no other way. In Jesus' name. And I also believe that I was there with Christ, I was buried with Christ, and now I'm resurrected with Him in the name of Jesus Christ. As I massage today, I pray that the Holy Spirit will come upon me and God will allow me to do what he wants me to do in his life. Yeah. I know in the year 2020 we are ending, I know that I die. I know that I die physically, spiritually, I die. But what God did, he gave me, he gave me life. He made me whole again. He anointed me. He said, go. I have so many dreams, but I can't explain them. But I gave it to the Almighty God. He revealed to me him. Jesus' name. Amen. Today, I stand in the presence of the Assembly of God. I want to be baptized today to live for Jesus for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. By you, do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you and that he resurrected for you? Do you want to follow Jesus for the rest of your life? Because of your declaration of faith, I am going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
mercy, do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you? Do you believe that he resurrected for you? Do you want to follow Jesus for the rest of your life? Because of your confession of faith, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit.
Amen. The service is not over, so just sit where you are, and we're going to pray for couples. So we'll ask couples to come. Maybe you can keep a little distance between each other, and we'll anoint you and pray for you with uh, Sister Lydia this morning. So the first couple will be the first couple best, all right? 